All right, I'd like to uh, thanks, uh, thank you, everyone who uh, uh, showed up for the talk. Uh, the talk is um, oh, starting. Is Kong Kung Fu defending yourself at DEF CON? Uh, my name is Rob. Uh, a little bit about myself: I've been in the IT industry for about 14 years, and security for about 10. Uh, I'm just a you know technical guy like you, so uh, I thought I'd try to give back to the community a little bit. Been coming to DEF CON for about six years now, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. So I uh, hope you uh, find this, uh, this talk interesting. All right, some of the things uh, that I want to uh, get across to you today, um, some things that I, I learned, some things that I think you can take away from this uh, and put to use right away. Uh, some ways that uh, wireless networks are subverted commonly, uh, not necessarily here at DEF CON. Some have been used in the past effectively. Uh, there are some methods in place now to uh, prevent that, but uh, still there's a lot of shenanigans that uh, happen here at DEF CON as usual. The other thing is uh, give away some t-shirts. Uh, the good people at uh, Jinx uh, uh, donated a few t-shirts today, so uh, they're going to be setting up shop tomorrow. Uh, please go by and uh, pick up some of their stuff. They've got great stuff. And uh, we'll be going through, we've got three trivia questions throughout the presentation. Uh, so we'll just uh, throw those out there, and the first one to answer correctly, uh, we'll get a t-shirt. You can go pick them up tomorrow from Jinx. All right, so last year I was uh, attending uh, this conference here, and I was just like you. I was sitting in one of, the, one of those chairs, and I was uh, surfing Slashdot and uh, doing my thing. I go into a Linux shell, do some more stuff, you know, screw around a little bit, and uh, I see my scroll bar, my Firefox scroll bar going up and down, up and down, right? Going to pages, going to websites that I'm not going to refer to right now, uh, if you know what I mean. Uh, I didn't like it too much, but I shut down right away. All right. Uh, so Firefox was definitely possessed. Uh, it was taken over. Uh, subsequently, I, I took a, a closer look at things uh, back at the office. Uh, there was a, a master boot, rec uh, uh, master boot record uh, virus uh, Trojan salt uh, for command and control. Uh, trying to load uh, a live CD uh, only let me uh, load from certain um, uh, parameters, not all. Uh, also, millworm.lzm, it was slipstreamed into my boot um, uh, sequence. Uh, you can do that by use uh, live mod, and uh, at least in backtrack, mo uh, some other distros too, but you can slipstream right in on the fly, right while the OS is, OS is running. This happened every time. Uh, millworm would, uh, would, or the, um, the sequence would be uh, you'd get an IP address, millworm would automatically update, and then a command and control channel would be established uh, uh, through a back channel. So uh, one of the things that I determined was the cause of this was DNS rec redirection from uh, my wireless, uh, from a wireless interception that I was using here at DEF CON. So there's a lot of ways to do this, uh, but the, the end result was uh, the, most of my lo uh, logs were wiped, uh, most of my system binaries were compromised, they weren't the same ones, they are typical stuff, right? We, we've seen it a lot before, but um, it happened to me and it didn't feel so good. All right, so um, air hijacking can be accomplished in a few ways. And by the way, I'm, I'm talking kind of fast because I've, I've put an hour, <laughs> an hour of stuff worth in uh, to 20 minutes, and we've got the trivia stuff. So I'm going to move along pretty quickly here. So sorry if I'm talking real fast. Ettercap has been around for a long time. Uh, real tried and true, real good uh, tool. Uh, Doug Song's DSNF package, DNS, DNS spoof, some other real good tools. Uh, Aircrack NG suite, of course. Uh, and then the Karma Car Metasploit um, package, which is just awesome. Uh, AP impersonation with uh, Metasploit's automatic uh, exploiting uh, features. And then uh, Airpwn, we're gonna talk a little bit about Airpwn because that's really, really sweet. So Airpwn doesn't even require you to be associated with the AP. It can, it can rip uh, traffic right out of the, out of the air and uh, uh, inject it or uh, uh, substitute it. So I was going to do a live uh, demo. I don't have time to do that, so we're going to diagram it a little bit here. So we've got your typical wireless uh, client and your wireless router here. So the wireless client is connecting to the wireless router. He's going to say, all right, I need to go to a web page. The uh, web page is going to go up to the router. The router needs to find out what, what the DNS record is. Uh, so he goes to DNS. Uh, ask for what the IP address is. They tell him. He goes out to the website. What I'm trying to get by here, get to you here, is there's a lot going on before the web web uh, request even goes out to the internet. So um, while this is happening, we have a wireless attacker sitting sitting uh, in the uh, stream of traffic, saying, uh, "Hey, I know what your request is. I can give you whatever I want." 
So he's listened to this and he knows exactly what's requested. The web request is gonna go through a multitude of different routers, especially if you have like Comcast like I do and you get like eight different routers in there. So he's getting ready a JavaScript or some kind of other malicious code to insert into this traffic stream. And when the inherent latency of the internet is around 31 uh, milliseconds, and the local LAN of the is going to be uh, the local LAN latency for this wireless attacker is going to be much lower, you know, less than a millisecond. He's always going to beat you to the punch. There's no way you're going to beat him. So he's always going to be able to, if he knows what your request is, he's always going to be able to feed it to you before you can get back from the internet. So he goes and he throws in something before you get your web, requ web request back, and he can do things such as URL redirection. He can um, uh, subvert your traffic session to his own uh, laptop running his own website. Or you can throw in some malicious JavaScript uh, just in the page that you requested. So you see Facebook or you see Hotmail or you see whatever and uh, behind the scenes you're getting a JavaScript, uh, a malicious JavaScript uh, code uh, executed on your system. Now this didn't even take any root compromise on the box but you already have, you can already impair the box. So this makes our attacker very happy. He now has, he can do whatever he wants and that's what happened to me. All right, so we've got uh, trivia. If anybody knows what that... Uh... <laughs> Good. Okay, so the trivia question is, um, first one is, and uh, uh, raise your hand or shout out or something. I'll try to catch whoever says it first, but forgive me if uh, I don't. The first one is, in the 1983 movie War Games, what computer did the character David Lightman use in access to access Whopper? Uh, you with the, the, the baseball cap and the gray shirt. Yep, stand up. Yep, you stand up. No! All the way back. Yes, come on up. Good, it was an MSI 8080. All right, nice computer there. And that's actually a picture of the original one that was used. All right, so what you should have done before coming here, left your laptop at home, <laughs> right? All right, but nobody's gonna do that. What fun is that, all right? So the other things you could have done, broadband wireless card. Now, I'm not saying any of this is gonna protect you from getting owned, all right? Because as we're all gonna see this week, there's a lot of stuff you can subvert any technology. Uh, updates, patches before you come here, oops. Laptop with no important data on it, not your work, work laptop, something that you don't care about <laughs> that you can throw in the garbage on your way to the airport. Uh, or use a VM. VMs are really good. Uh, you can just nuke them again, you know, start up a new VM from a snapshot or something. All right, uh, you, uh, comprehensive hardening. Uh, some good stuff here. Uh, security templates from Windows. You know, they'll get you, you know, started anyway. Uh, Bastille Linux uh, by Jay Beal. Great tool that he made several years ago. Real good um, uh, cocoon for your Linux system. Uh, and uh, host intrusion prevention systems. Lots of uh, lots out there. OSX, some other stuff. Uh, you can lock down your BIOS, your, your master boot record. Now, some BIOSes don't allow this. There are some third, third party tools that do. But check out your BIOS settings. There's some uh, good stuff in the new ones. Uh, configuration changes. Uh, you want to block all inbound connections. So use your host firewall on your Windows workstation or your, uh, your, uh, your host.deny file, uh, all, all, to block all incoming. Uh, close all services you're not using. Uh, obviously change your root password. If you haven't done that, you shouldn't be bringing a laptop anywhere. <laughs> use your antivirus automatic update signatures before you come here. Use Conky to uh, check out. Conky's a great tool if you haven't used it in Linux before uh, to check uh, what connections are inbound and outbound and any other processes you're running, uh, depending on how you set up. Hard set your DNS servers. Uh, protect your logs. Real, real important. There's some good tools out there to do that. Uh, one of the things that's easy to do is you can just tail your logs um, uh, while you're working. You know, just put them in the foreground. Uh, your auth log and syslog. Uh, Windows is a little bit harder to do that. You have to have a stupid GUI open all the time. Uh, run Audit D, great tool, really neat. Uh, all your logs sh uh, should be owned and readable by root only. All right, check that. That's usually the default, but sometimes it gets switched. Uh, log check, another good tool for uh, keeping an eye on your logs and swatch. 
uh, SS pro SSH proxying. So this is one of the, probably the best bang for your buck you can do when you're, you're at a coffee house or, or a DEF CON convention or anything else. Uh, you can set up a tunnel, tunnel Firefox over that tunnel. Now there's some considerations here. You have to have a, uh, a SSH proxy established before you get here with LoneStar.org or FreeShell or something that gives you um, 443 forwarding. And you have to know that SSH key before you get here. Because if you do it while you're here, you're not going to get the right key. You're going to get somebody else's key. You're going to be going to Romania. Uh, all right, Firefox hardening, no script, awesome tool. Great tool for this. Um, uh, blocks JavaScript, it's always updated, really good. Um, use known grid proxy. Oh, and the DNS about doc config in Firefox, turn that to true because that will allow your proxy to resolve DNS instead of the local LAN. So if the local LAN is resolving it, you already got a problem. Uh, if you're going to use IE, use IE8, uh, there's some mild improvements. Don't use IE8. <laughs> uh, run Snort. Okay, great, awesome tool. I think everybody knows that here. It's a little bit um, uh, cumbersome to, to initially set up, but there's some great signatures, get some great wireless shenanigans going on, uh, gets you alerted to a lot of stuff. Uh, Kismet. Uh, will alert you on deauthentication and de disassociation floods um, attacks, and uh, uh, it, it's really good Linux tool that's built into most everything. Uh, run Air Snare from win for Windows, a uh, tool I've been using for about two months now, nice little GUI thing that shows you a lot of stuff on the network, blah, blah, blah. Uh, do not check email. Do not go to LinkedIn or Facebook, all right? If, if you want any proof, go over the wall of sheet because you'll see it all up there starting tomorrow thing. I don't know if it's up there already, but. Uh, one thing to know is even if you go into SSL, a lot of the stuff isn't going to be unencrypted after the login page. Like you go to Hotmail, you go back to an HTTP page. Now your messages are going to still be encrypted, but there's a lot of stuff, ads and stuff, that are not encrypted. So you can just slipstream something right in there and you won't even get a warning. Port scan detection. Um, Fyodor's um, NMAPS network scanning book, awesome resource. The more you know about scanning, the more you know how to uh, detect it and prevent it. Uh, page 238, 283. Um, and this will be all in the slides. And I'll be updating them too. They'll be updated on the website. Uh, scan log D and port sentry. Two really great tools for Linux workstations. Uh, will automatically block uh, some attacks uh, in uh, which could leave you susceptible to a DOS against yourself, but you can whitelist some sites that you never want to get blocked. So these are really cool tools, really easy to get up and running quick. Zone alarm for Windows, tried and true. And PSAD, an oldie but a goodie. It still works. Check it out. Okay, trivia. Okay, so the trivia question is, what was depicted on the DEF CON 8 human badges? Okay, let me give you a clue. The year was 2000, and it was just after the Matrix. Nothing, huh? All right, well, okay, go ahead. No, no, that's a good, good guess out there. Uh, the answer is the red pill. But there's, there's a backup question. All right. Who is the dopest DJ in the galaxy? Right behind the monitor. Yep. You got DJ Jackalope. Come on up. She'll be spinning some tracks this weekend. All right. Do you think? All right, so you want to check out, you want to make sure that, and you're not sure if you got owned, you know, you want, you, you want verification. So check your logs. We talked about tailing your logs. Um, if you still got them, check them. <laughs> High network utilization, funky processes, and yes, Goatsy. So Airpone was introduced in DEF CON 12 uh, here at DEF CON, and they, uh, the originators, ran it here and inserted all images coming through people's web pages and through their browsers with Goatsy. So they went to all their favorite web pages and saw Goatsy. 
it was, there was a lot of puking that day. Uh, check your MD5 hashes. If you have some known good binaries, you can MD5 them and make sure that they're the same ones you put on there originally. Forensic utilities on Backtrack and uh, Cisco, uh, System Rescue CD and so forth, uh, good ones to have. Connection monitors. Um, Cur ports for Windows is really good. It allows you to disconnect a connection that you don't like. So I like that one if you're running Windows. Um, Mario Etsy services and etsy.net.conf. Uh, so strike back. It's the most hostile network in the world. Be part of it. Jump in there. The things that I don't recommend you doing for a variety of reasons, but I'm going to mention a couple here. Do not DOS the wireless network. Well, these guys will come and get you. No matter how much you accomplish in life, you will never be as awesome as this. Ninjas with guitars. Do not screw with the APs or general DNS. Or this guy will come and get you. <laughs> now this was as painful for me to put in this PowerPoint slide as it was for you to see. So don't let this guy come and get you. All right, um, you want to have tools ready to terminate access uh, as soon as you see it and you think it's suspicious. WinDent and IcePick, um, some older tools but still useful. Again, if you use network map, uh, network uh, and map book, uh, ScanLog D. Port sentry again, these will block, offend uh, block uh, offenses and uh, block the ports until you uh, open them up again. And we got another trivia. All right. Okay, since we're in Vegas, this might be a tough one. Uh, since we're in Vegas, what casino was used for the Vegas scene in the movie Swingers? No. There's two answers. Go ahead. White shirt. No, not the Flamingo. With a, was it? No, not Caesar's Palace. Was it? Stardust. Stardust. Good one. Yes, this guy right here, Stardust. So it's now demolished, but they used it for the um, for the outside scene when they're walking by. Come on up. All right, uh, conclusion. Um, am I doing all right for time? Anybody know? All right, cool. That was faster than I thought. All right, so uh, have a blast here. Uh, this, is the, this is the most fun I have all year. You guys are going to enjoy the heck out of it if you haven't been here before, and you're going to enjoy it again if you have been. Uh, but one consideration, uh, if you have the inclination, put the laptop down, laptop down for a little while and um, try to meet some people because... When you come back to a conference and you see old friends that you made before, it's even better than, you know, if you just sat behind your laptop <clears throat> that, the whole time. So even if you can talk about laptops, talk to somebody. If you go on the network, monitor everything you can. Keep your pulse on everything that's going on. Um, assume that you're going to get owned, okay? Uh, assume that um, something's going to happen. And no matter what you think happened, nuke your laptop when you get home. Um, just totally wipe it. Rebuild the master boot record. Um, just consider it a trash laptop in all regards. A um, couple of support shouts I'd like to throw out there. Um, the EFF uh, support the, the summits tonight. Um, please go up there. They're defending our rights against uh, government intrusion and uh, uh, corporate entities, so please go up there and uh, support them. Uh, Hackers for Charity. Johnny Long's doing great stuff down in Africa. Uh, and uh, Big Fix is donating dollar for dollar right now, I think. So. Uh, uh, go and uh, support that, but please, if you're going to donate, don't do it from here. <laughs> okay, thanks very much. Any questions? Yeah, go ahead in the in the hat. So the question was, how was I running my? Um, in what uh, mode was I running in when I was um, running my? Uh, uh, Linux distro. I was running as a normal user. I wasn't running as root, but doesn't it, it, a lot of that stuff's not going to matter once you get a web session owned. So there's going to be a lot of um, privilege, uh, uh, privilege escalation attacks that can happen after the fact. Yeah, I, I thought we were going to get a CD like we have in the past, but I guess, did you get a CD? Oh, you did. Okay, so it should be on there. I've updated these um, some. So there's, on the website, they're going to post all the updated slides. So anything that's changed will be up on the website after the con. 
Oh, it's not on CD. Look later. Okay. Okay, so it will be up on the website. Did somebody have? Okay, that's it. Thanks very much for attending. You guys have been awesome. <laughs>